back and we are here again on the journey to prevent Alzheimer's with Dr. Sanjeev Gold. Last week we talked about the type of testing, genetic testing that you could do. Uh, you did the test and are there other tests like in different parts of the world or like where does someone go? Do they go to their physician? Do they Google this? How do they get access to these tests? Yeah, I think we spent one episode talking about the, the value of APOE genetic testing. Yes. Which is considered like, you know, the first test that people were going going out there. I kind of talked, we talked about 23andMe and yes. how like, you know, 10 years ago people were doing this type of test. And then uh, I think most recently we did a little test. We did the cognitive test. Correct. Look at how my brain is functioning. But I want to go back to the genetic testing yes. to say that the APOE Beyond that, now there's a much better genetic test out there. Wow, okay. So, because, and like I said, APOE kind of tells you about one specific gene. Right, and APOE right? is that gene. Is that the yeah, name of the that's gene? that's the name of okay. the gene. It's a type of protein. Okay. And there's, like I said, there was three different versions of that. Correct. Like two version, a three version, and a four version. Right. And the four version was the risk version. Right. So depending on the combination and what it is, yeah. you are more... Uh, prone to having Alzheimer's exactly and but you also said that in the earlier stage it's a good thing and then it's okay. not a great not a great thing yeah, right uh, pleiotropy this is yeah. you know everything kind of has a benefit and, and a risk yeah and that's that's the, what's how nature works uh, but uh, what I want to talk about today was that we have we have better genetic testing than just knowing your APOE status it's not okay. the full story it's not a dead sentence out there and just know you need to kind of get, go further than that if you really want to understand your genetic risk. So what is the, do you have the name of the test? Yeah, or? so okay. there's a company out there called Cytox and they have a, a test called the GenoScore Alzheimer's Risk uh, Test. And what they're looking at is over a hundred different genes. Okay. You know, SNPs, we call these SNPs, which are little, uh, you know, um, uh, variations of genes. Okay. Okay. And they're looking at a hundred different versions, hundred different uh, genes. Spots, yes, spots on our DNA. Okay. To see, uh, to get what we call a polygenic risk score. So that's uh, so basically a polygenic risk score means that, let's say you have you know you have one one four on your APOE, and then you have another particular type of gene, you have a risk one, but maybe you have a protective gene somewhere else. Right. Because we understand that Alzheimer's is not just a one gene disease. There's sure. Very few things that are one gene anymore. Every, it's always a, a combination it's a of combination things. It's a combination of right. many okay. different things. That's what we understand. That's why it's been so difficult with this whole genetic therapy. Like it, it was never, it never fulfilled its promise. We always thought, oh yeah, we, we're just gonna like go and fix this gene and change this disease. It never actually happened. It's kind Why of like they're, they're all in relationship with each other, exactly. right? And if you fix this, it impacts this. And exactly. you got too much of that. It's like our whole body is this, I don't know, um, yin-yang kind of thing, right? Yeah, I think that it's much more complex. And what okay. we're understanding is that we can look at the data of thousands and thousands of people and see what was their profile of all these different genes, hundreds of genes, and figure out what was the... Uh, uh, what profile created the best Sit, okay best situation right and what created the most the worst risk so there, that's how they can do that they can do that basically computers and modeling and all that they can understand by looking at you know many different genes to figure out what is the risk profile now I mean as somebody progresses into Alzheimer's for example if I did that hundred gene test yeah um, is there obviously as the physicians or the, those who are looking at it is there a kind of like view to say, oops, oh, uh, with people with a lot of Alzheimer's, not a lot of Alzheimer's, in Al with Alzheimer's, mm -hmm. they, ha they present this, you know, way in this graph. So if you see something early, is there, is that, are they going to tell you that, does it predict that you're going to have it for sure or not? No, no, nothing okay. is ever, a, okay. nev nothing is ever, uh, for sure. For sure. It's always a predisposition. Under the rights, under a particular set of environmental circumstance, that can make the disease happen. Okay. It's just always going to give you a risk score. It's going to say, hey, out of 100 people, 95, you know, 50% of people are having a better risk than you, and 55, 50% of people will have a, a lower, uh, higher risk than you, or something like that. Or it might be, sure. or it might be like you're in the top, you know, 
ten percent of people who are at risk of, of getting the disease. So are, that, you know. are, are, because you're on a journey to discover in advance mm -hmm. and then do whatever you can do both, I guess, pharmaceutically and holistically mm -hmm. to prevent it. Can you, has there been evidence that somebody's done this approach where they discovered it and actually reduced it? Well, you can never change your risk score. Like you're born yeah. with the okay. risk score. Like okay. That's whatever. But maybe your cognitive behavior is better, like after uh, a certain test. Yeah. Well, right now, this is what this journey is about. Yeah. Like we're going <laughs> to be showing that. Uh, yeah. You know, I'm. I have a particular risk, and we're going to follow this me over years. We're going to yeah. show people as the science is changing and new treatments are coming. I'm going to basically be doing those treatments, and I'm going to be telling you and seeing, right. telling you what's working and what's not working, and you're going to see it. You're going to see it as you follow me along. Are you going to take this test or have you already done it? I have taken the test and I want to ah, okay. unveil it for another, okay. another right. time because cool. I just wanted people to get the understanding cool. that there is another test out there, much more sophisticated than the APOE genetic test, provides a better understanding of your genetic risk. It's called a polygenic risk score. It's by a company called Cytox and the test is called the GenoScore, Alzheimer's Risk uh, test. And because you're a physician, is it that you had access to it or like because you've discovered the APOE, the next natural thing to do was to get curious about your genetics or does does anybody do that first? No, I mean th there's always a cost issue here. I mean sure. it's it this only makes sense to do this further test. Right. I think if you already have some risk factor Five. which, you know, okay. uh, the APOE uh, would would kind of tell you yeah. So, uh, and there's, you know, it costs about $1,000 Canadian, um, probably, you know, and has to be ordered through a physician. But it's and in depth, right? Yeah, so I'm just saying it, it gives you a better understanding because mm -hmm. if your risk is low on that, then you can be a bit more reassured. Sure. If it told you, hey, you know what, there's alarm bells here, you have a higher genetic risk, that means you have to take even more effort and, and right. uh, lifestyle changes and other. Um, but, to, but to your point, I think you, you see it as peace of mind. Having the information, it's not going to change anything. Knowing means you can deal with it better. Yeah, and that's, I think this is, this is what I want to try to get across here is that a lot of people are afraid of finding out because they think there's no point in finding out because you can't change it. Right. And why would you want to know about something you can't change? And what I'm trying to show here in this, in this whole series right. is that it's actually better to find out, even with the disease that's as scary as Alzheimer's, uh, we now have enough science that we're understanding about what causes it. Yes. And so even if you have a particular genetic risk, it doesn't mean it's a death sentence. It doesn't mean it's going to happen. Right. It's actually better to take action now. It means like, you know, being careful about not smoking, exercising regularly, doing, you know, brain exercises, you know, not, um, you know, not getting involved in head injuries, you know. Yeah. All these things make a difference. Eating properly, getting a mixture. No tackle vitamins. football at 78, guys, <laughs> <Yeah>. okay? <laughs> Wear a helmet. <laughs> we, have to, we basically have to, you know, work with what we got. And, and a lot of things now are, because we understand how Alzheimer's is working. Yeah. And like I, told, I, said, I, said, I mentioned before, it's a problem of eliminating these types of, a buildup of particular type of toxins within our cells. So if we can help do that, some people just tend to build up faster than others. Right. But doesn't mean it's going to happen. Well, I'm, I'm so glad to be part of this uh, conversation and journey and hope that uh, I, I, I have my mind intact while I'm doing this. But I'll get all the tips from Sanjeev anyway. So we will see you next week. All right. Take care.